welcome to MCN Motorcycle Show in London. I'm here with... Username Kate. Kate, what are we up to? Oh my gosh, there's so much to do. So we're here at the show, we're gonna have a wander around, we're gonna look at all the stalls, we're gonna look at the bike stands and check out the bikes, and hopefully just have a good time. And what else are we getting up to later? Ah, so we're doing something pretty exciting on the drag strip at half past three. We're gonna be ripping down there. We're on there with amazing racers. We've got Peter Hickman, John McGuinness, we've got Dom Herbertson. Like there's some big names and we're gonna be on the strip with them, I can't wait. On the Rocket 3 R oh, and the Rocket the 3 GT. GT. There are so many new bikes this year that yes. we need to check out, get a feel for, and just have a look around. Definitely. Should we go around? Should we go Let's check go. them? along the hall we've come across the beautiful new de Yavel v4 kate what are your thoughts on this bike so i'm really excited to see the v4 gran turismo engine in this bike it was previously a 1260 l-shaped twin we've got v4 rawness i'm so excited to get on it and see how it compares and i just think it's going to be an absolute brute what I love about this bike is that there's nothing like this bike. In terms of it being yeah. a muscle dragster, mm -hmm. it's a V4 muscle dragster and Hyper Cruiser in a way as well. Definitely. I think Hyper Cruiser is exactly the way to like coin it because yeah. it's just so muscular and yes. it's cruiser-esque like looking, but it's got like the super bike performance yes. with what, 162 horsepower. It's a genre on its own. Mm. It's gorgeous and I bet it sounds amazing oh. with that V4 engine. We need to look at the exhaust on this. Don't Come think, around, have a look at this. Have a look. I don't think there's an exhaust like it. Stuck on the right hand side. What are your thoughts on that? Because some people have criticised it for looking a little bit cramped yeah. on the side. But do you like that look? I think from where you're stood, mm. I love that angle of how it yeah. looks. Um, more so than any other angle. Yes. Uh, but it will be interesting to see what aftermarket options do end up coming yes. out on this bike, given that it's so new. They've also shaved a lot of weight off the new Diavel compared mm. to the older one. So this has a much higher power to ratio which is, which is what i love about certain bikes where they yeah. have a lot of power and less weight you're getting the best out of the bike yeah. really i love that definitely are you excited to ride it i really want to ride it i want to get on it i want to just see what it's like with that 240 yeah. booty the big 240 rear tire and yeah i just want to sample the v4 in it really because yeah. it'll be interesting apparently it has more you know mid-range than um the previous predecessor so it will be interesting to mm. see right let's have a look at the monster let's go strolling across the ducati stand we come mm. across the beautiful ducati yes. monster sp tell us a little bit about this okay well it's quite a transformation from the monster it's never quite looked this slim and agile the previous monsters you know you've had like you've had yeah. 696s yeah. you've had you know big 1200s yeah. and they were always quite a bulky bike with a, a big sort of trellis frame yeah. They've streamlined it, they've slimmed it down, they've given it an incredible power to weight ratio. What yeah. are we working with figures wise on this Ruby? Well, we've got 111 brake horsepower, we've got 92 newton meter of torque, and it weighs around 186 kgs. Now, yes. power to ratio is not as extreme as the Diablo, of course, mm. but I still think that this bike would be an absolute blast. Like, yeah. it's just fun, it's comfortable, it's a little bit like a hooligan bike. It's, yeah. I mean, what? class would you put this in is it a supermoto is it a naked so i'd have it kind of competing against the likes of like the nt09 and maybe the street triple yeah and stuff like that just in terms of of category mm. and it has a awesome. nice uh, brembo master um, cylinder as well so with the sp you get the termi exhaust which look absolutely beautiful you've got the carbon tip on the end of them and they just look so just aggressive and stealthy it's nice that that's included as Part of the bike when you're buying it so yes. it's, it's one less thing to think about when you're buying the bike yeah and on the twin engine i think that will sound really really nice definitely okay we better move on to the next bike we better shift find the next victim let's go to review we are here at the triumph stand i'm on the street RS with Kate. Kate, yeah, I feel like you're trying to get your knee down, yeah, man. I'm trying to get my elbow down. Yeah, elbow down. <laughs> what bikes are we going to check out at the Tron stand? 
So, there's so many nice, interesting bikes that Triumph have. Uh, I think a cult favourite is a Rocket 3, obviously. Of course, especially in the Chrome Edition. Exactly. So yeah, onto the Chrome Edition. There's so many nice bikes in the Chrome Collection. Yeah. Like literally, I love the Thruxton yes. RS. Which, the Bobber as well. The Bobber. Oh. Like, they just look so elegant and yeah. so beautiful. So yeah. yeah, looking forward to checking them out. Up next is the beautiful Triumph Bobber. It's a 1200cc parallel twin. What have we got on this bike, Kate? So we're working with 77 brake horsepower and 106 newton meters of torque. Now, I rode uh, this before and I've just had a run on the Super Sprint earlier um, for a practice run. And this bike is such a joyful bike. Yeah. It's comfortable. It's got character. Uh -huh. It's got that kind of like retro feeling to it. For example, the key ignition is on the side of the bike, as you can see. So that's yeah. how you turn the ignition on. The dials are like the, kind of the traditional dials. Yeah. There's nothing digital. No. Nope. But you also have the advantage of the modern benefits that you have on bikes, such as electronics and riding aids. We've got ABS and traction control. What are your thoughts on this bike, considering you haven't ridden it? Yeah, so I haven't ridden this bike specifically. I've ridden a Speedmaster, which the engine, you know, very similar. So I've had a yeah. taste of that. And if it's anything like that, the engine on the Speedmaster is a very it's almost like a lazy ride but not slow but yeah it's it's fun it sounds incredible i also really like the fact that triumph have really opened this bike up to you know a big demographic with the accessibility of the seat height yes. it's so low yeah. and i think that's great for the shorter individual yes and so. it, you know if you're shorter and you're considering a bike that is more accessible doesn't mean it needs to be slower no exactly you know I mean? like you can still rock your yeah. 1200 cc's but you don't have to, you know, sort of compromise there. So. It's also worth mentioning that it has torque assist clutch. Okay. <laughs> you made us wait for that. <laughs> so we are introducing a Ruby favorite. Ruby, what have we got? Ruby favorite is the Rocket 3R. Oh my god, I'm so passionate about this you bike. You really are. As you know, yeah. 2.5 litre triple, 165 brake horsepower, 221 newton meter of torque, weighs around 300, power to weight ratio is unbelievable. Crazy. This will literally outride a lot of things. You've ridden it, what did you think of it? So, my riding experience of the Rocket 3R, literally, it is a bike that does make you want to take out a big loan yeah like yes. i want to own one yes. like it's incredible it's there's nothing really like it like how it feels to ride literally you whack it on and you hold on and you hope to god that you can cling on yes. it goes like a scalded weasel for sure i love the fact that it's just so larry second gear bit damp you whack it on you light the god. rear up it's spinning he's wild honestly it's an exciting bike for sure. wild is the word for like. the rocket 3r i think as you said it's a genre on its own it's a muscle hyper cruiser yeah it's it just does so many things mm -hmm. and yes it's got a long wheelbase yes it's a little bit bulky and heavy but it handles and rides so much better it than does. what you would assume looking at it, right? Definitely. And it's low as well. So yes. that makes the weight far more manageable than if it was quite a tall bike, which yeah. helps, you know. Did you know the Rocket 3R is a little bit taller than the GT? I didn't know that. A little bit but It's more. like a Ruby yeah. fun fact. Yeah. And it also got cool things like you've got your traction control, you've got your ABS. It has uphill control yeah. assist. Like hill hold. Assist. Hill hold. That's the one. Yes. Yeah. And it's got the cruise control. And it actually has a really bonny TFT dash. It's a beautiful display. Yes, very kind of premium. That's what yes. I love about it. You know, it is a lot of money, but you get what you're paying for, especially with a chrome. Handy if you want to check your face now and again. <laughs> I love right? that. And guess what, Kate? Yeah. This only comes from standard, comes with 60% throttle. That is mad to me. When it's out of warranty, remap it, I get that 40%. Get that 40% more throttle get it, and lift all the restrictions and it will just run beautifully. I mean, I struggle to think how you can top it with power and acceleration. Like, yeah. like that's just mind-boggling to me. Yeah. And then, you know what? There's one little thing about this bike that I really, I think is such a small detail, but such a nice touch. Yeah. Show our cameraman the pegs. So beautiful. So the pegs are foldable like this. So over-engineered. Can you sit on it and demonstrate, please? It's just a neat finish to the bike to have the pillion pegs like this. We 
are here at the Royal Enfield stand and we are on the HNTR 350. Kate, yes. what are your thoughts on this bike? So this bike is lovely. We've ridden this bike through London. We were just living our best lives, weaseling through the traffic, putting it up. And yeah, perfect for that environment, definitely. Considering it's got around 20 brake horsepower and 27 newton meter of torque, it actually rides and handles so well. It really does. I mean, the engine, we've got a single overhead cam. It shares the same engine as the classic 350 and the Meteor 350. Right. So it's like a tried and tested engine for Enfield. Yes. And it is just a proper like thumper. And like there's yes. just so much talk for like the city. Just blah, blah. Yes. It's just a really lovely bike. I love how on. much character it's got as well in terms of the styling, in terms of the accessories and the options that you can have on the bike. Yeah, there, there are so many accessories and that's, I think, a really interesting thing about this bike where yeah. you can really just make it your own. You can, your Hunter, oh, sorry, should I say HNCR for the yeah. English market, <laughs> can basically look so much different from somebody else's HNCR because mm. there are just so many different tweaks. I almost didn't recognise this as a yeah. HNCR when we came in. Exactly. Because of the seat, of the rear seat hump. Yeah, and um, the bars uh, Seat rest, sorry, and the cage around it. Yeah. just looks completely different and it's got the screen, which we didn't have originally. Yeah, that's true, we didn't have yeah. So yeah, lots of you know different options. Mirrors are beautiful as well. Very, very. I think user friendly, but fun bike. Fun bike. And I think it's priced excellently as well. Yes. Shall we move on to the next bike? Let's go. Let's do it. Let's go, guys. We are here on the Super Meteor 650, a wonderful cruiser edition from Royal Enfield that utilizes its already established and well known 650 platform. It's the first Royal Enfield to have upside down forks and it comes with around 46 brake horsepower and 52.3 newton meter of torque. Kate, what are your initial thoughts on the styling of this? So the initial thoughts, I mean, we're all familiar with the Meter 350 and this is just like its beefier big brother. Yes. I think it looks beautiful. Uh, if cruisers are your thing, your, yeah. your bike, the genre that you like, it's a pretty nice example of one. Yeah. And I think the paint schemes for a start are just absolutely lovely. I think Royal Enfield have hit the nail on the head yes. with the colour schemes and the designs. Yes, it comes in, I think, four different colour schemes that are so different. Like yes. uh, astral blue and astral green, really nice like premium looking finishes um, it yeah. weighs around 240 and it's actually ASU compliant yeah so we've got an ATU compliant bike it's got a 15.7 litre tank which is pretty oh, good yeah. and I also like the fact that because it's a cruiser you've got a seat height of 740 mil which is very low and accessible you know, anyone can ride it yeah really it's a great starter bike as well if you're yeah. if you want something that you've got a restricted license and you want something comfortable and not intimidating yeah. this is a great option and I definitely feel like it looks bigger than a 650 as well Ruby we are here at BMW and I have been waiting for this bike for so long it is about time that BMW put a 200 plus brake horsepower bike in a naked and I couldn't be more excited. It's absolutely unbelievable and it's so extreme to have all that power yeah. and all that torque. We've got 210 brake horsepower, we've got 113 newton meter of torque. It weighs under 200 kgs, a naked weighing that little. All that amount of power and torque and the ratio is just unbelievable. Yeah. We had the opportunity to ride it. We did. Last year yes. at Almeria. What were your thoughts? So my first thoughts was, we. I think we mainly rode it on road. We got a little bit of track time. As a street weapon, it is phenomenal. It's so fast. It's so throaty. The sound is addictive. You're just wah, wah, winding it on. Yeah. And it's just a bike that just gives you the feels. Yes. Just gives yeah. you the feels. It gives you a buzz for sure. I remember yes. the roads in Almeria were amazing and twisty. And I remember Switch that bags. buzz. Talk about razor sharp handling. Yes. It was just on point, going exactly where you want it to go. Literally. It was... It was just a wonderful bike to ride, to be honest. And I think because I've ridden the S1000R yeah. and then riding the M1000R with, you know, sort of, gosh, what is it? I'd say 50 more horsepower. Yes, like, at least. It's scandalous. And the, do you know what? It's such a well mannered bike, low down. Yes. So you hear 210 brake horsepower, it's, it sounds scary. But I feel like you could have, you know, a, a degree of riding competence, get on this and it will look after you. Yes. It's got the electronic sweep, yes. which is industry leading yes. and it really does have your back with all the electrical Yes. 
And I think BMW are experts at, at making versatile rides on, on, on all of their bikes. You can have an absolute weapon. You, you know, with a, a click of a button, you can have an absolute weapon on track. And then you can, you know, you can switch everything on. Or you can put it in rain mode if Exactly, you, you can put it in rain mode if things get a little bit tricky, you know. Yeah. And that's why I love BMWs generally is that they really know how to tailor a ride. And that's it's all it. about position. You get a lot of premium parts. It's fully kitted out with M brakes and... Yeah, it's been such a joy to ride. It has. I mean, we didn't ride the competition package, which is what this bike is that I'm sat on today. And the main difference is this is dripping in carbon, even more so than the non-competition part. The wings look absolutely ridiculous and, and extreme in such a good way because on Nakers, generally, the wings are not as wide Honestly. and not as extreme. Yeah. And I love that mean look. Worth mentioning as well is that the M1R has the smart shift cam. So it has the engine. Yeah. of the S1000R as opposed to the S1000R that has the engine of the old XR. So that is a very good point. Yeah, yeah. we've got shift cam in this, which yes. I feel like people have been crying out for shift cam in yeah. BMW's naked bike and they finally got it and 210 brake horsepower to go with it. So yeah, it's a, it was a phenomenal bike to ride mm. and I actually can't wait to get out on it more this year. I'm looking forward to doing more riding in Spain with you hopefully, hopefully. soon. Thanks Stay tuned. Fast. Stay tuned. <laughs>
the bar, the bars are really bent inwards. Yeah, I mean, like I say, it's for land speed, so um, you know, normally you just get tucked in. There's a bodywork on it, so I'm inside getting tucked in, so it, it's okay. You don't really have to worry about manoeuvring it at all. You just get off the line and go. How did you find the U-turn? Uh, it's, it's awkward, but it's manageable. It's good fun. So the wheelbase is unbelievably long, it is, yeah. and that's to keep the front down. I'm guessing. Yeah, it's uh, basically it's for stability as well, um, at high speed as well, so and and, le and length. So I can lay, spread myself out over the bike yeah. and get my, get my head height down. Yeah. Um, so it's for less wind resistance. It's easier when it's like stripped of everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Pleasure. Peter. How you doing, all right? Yes, good, thank you. How are you feeling about riding your race bike on the Super Yeah, it should be interesting. It's actually quite short. It's not very grippy. We did one run yesterday. Um, obviously, we've got no tyre warmers or anything. Slicks don't really work without warmers, so um, it's definitely going to be a bit of fun anyway. Yeah. And are you going to show us any tricks or stunts? I doubt, I doubt that very much. I'll try not to anyway. <laughs> Do us a little burnout or something. Yeah, I've been told off for that already. We're not allowed to do burnouts. How can they tell off Peter Hickman? <laughs> I know. We'll try. Well, Sunday. Maybe they'll fight after the final run. Can't tell me off after the last one. Maybe. Well, wishing you all the best. Thank you. We have got Craig here at the uh, paddock area in the Super Sprint. Hi, Craig. Nice to meet you. Hello. Uh, and nice to meet the beautiful H2. Tell us a little bit more about this bike, because I know it's... It's got, a bit of a it's got a bit of history, this bike, actually. This is uh, one of the bikes from the original LaSalle launch in 2015. Right. It's also the bike that Hilliard did the lap of the TT. Wow. So we've, uh, at Kawasaki, we've mothballed this bike more times than you can shake a stick at. And yeah. when this was announced, we said, do you want us to bring it? Um, so we've uh, demothballed it, run it up uh, yesterday, had a quick rip down yesterday. And um, yeah, we try and, I know it's not a competition, but we are going to try and win. I'm sure you will on a supercharged beast. This is a H2R, isn't it? It's about 310 brake horsepower, I'm assuming. Yeah, they're, they're, they're quoted at 330, but this actual one is 299.9 horsepower at the wheel. That's 300. Yeah. That's unbelievable. How are you feeling about running that on the strip where it's not, it's not the grippiest stri uh, strip? No, to be honest, it spins the whole way down. So yesterday it found some grip and wheelie towards the end, but it spins as you set off. Yeah. You kind of have to roll it a bit. You wind back on and it spins again. And we're running a tyre warmer because it, it just wouldn't work without. Do you set things like traction and electronics and everything like that pre-race? Uh, I've turned it all off. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's uh, quite baffling, really, to have all that power to the rear wheel. It sounds unbelievable when you, um, yeah. the, your colleague was was revving it. it sounds amazing it's it's a lot louder when we get out the front this is a standard system so it's a completely open system it's about 130 decibels right yes it's a uh, standard on the h2r isn't that's it? right yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah yeah um also well thank you for your time and wishing you all the luck on the strip <laughs> fingers crossed thank you so much we'll be right if she goes in we've got time we're in the but not any bobber it's a special bobber because charlie designed it well tell us what you did on it so this was my first triumph project yeah the bobber inspired me just because it's kind of got close ties to let's say it's it's like a harley davidson in terms of chassis setup so yes. for me and my background i wanted to then try something unique with this uh i've got a, quite a, a big racing history so a lot of my harley builds you'll find a performance influence uh, you know, in there as well. So yes. componentry, not just because it looks cool, but because it makes the bike a better ride. Yep. The Olin suspension, which you'll find in lots of Triumphs, but like I said, unique to this build. Yep. And um, it was just trying to be subtle. I didn't want to go over the top. We are yep. selling this motorcycle, so we could have spent another 30, 40 grand on it, but maybe not just yet. So there's not just this bobber being built. We've got three others being built at my other three stores as well. Yep. So a T120 and two Speed Twins. Yep. 
but this bobber, I think, you know, I hope you agree, come out pretty cool yeah. for my first Triumph build. Um, what do you think, Kate? What you think? I think it's gorgeous. I think you're very good at making things sort of very elegant and very beautiful and classy. I do have a question. Was there a really hard bit of the build that you was frustrating or it took time? Or what was I think the... for me it was more, I knew nothing about Triumphs when I started. So with Harley's I do it with my eye shot. I don't have to think about it. Uh, yeah. You know, I know everything there is to know. Uh, in the aftermarket world, in the custom world, factory world, where with Triumph I kind of walked in without realizing that I knew nothing about them. Yeah. So there was a quick and very steep learning curve on everything. But the hardest part was maybe realizing that I knew nothing about what I was about to do. <laughs> At least you're honest. I, yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to build something that represents me and my style, like I said earlier, the, the whole performance twist on customization. Yeah. You see it a lot more now than, than you did 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Uh, you know, it was one of the first to start building bikes with sports bike suspension. That's how I got my tie up with, with Erling suspension, was using World Superbike spec front forks on Harley Fatboys. When yeah. they told me I was I an idiot. I just noticed the suspension. Oh yeah, and that, that's oh, yeah. regular road to Olin's. Yeah. And I was using World Superbike spec or MotoGP spec yeah. stuff. Yeah that you know, you're looking at forks that cost you 20,000 and they don't actually fit anything. They They're not just our pieces, you know, these have got to be ridden. Yeah. So they've got to be, safety is paramount as well. You know, what we don't want is a bike that someone's spent a lifetime to saving on, ride it down the road and we've failed to build something with the best quality components and they have an accident. Yeah. That's not great for us. You, you're safer when you've got really good suspension as well. So things like that kind of add to yeah, the absolutely. element of safety. You know, and like we were saying earlier, I think suspension's so underrated. One, it, it gives you you will go faster with better suspension because your bike handles well in every condition. So it is a performance game. Just notice the carbon oh, bits on the front, yeah, the hugger. I'm a sucker for a bit of carbon. Same. So it's, um, yeah. I wish there was a little bit more. Yeah, I love how you went glossy and not matte. Gloss yeah. carbon is the one. It is, right? yeah. it is, yeah. What's your next project? For Triumph? Yeah. I've got a few, actually, I've got about seven. I'm building a kind of desert sled looking T120 yeah. at my uh -huh. central London store. Um, that should be finished Wednesday or Thursday next week. Oh wow. I have two Speed Twin, um, which are going to look a little bit like my Flat Track Race Team inspired. I can't wait to tracker, see that one. But you, you've seen my race bikes. I've seen uh, it. They're going to have a strong influence coming from that. Speed Triple RR, Moto 2 track bike wow. as well. Oh, so imagine uh, that on track. So that would be good, but that would be a personal project. I'm looking forward to that. Get out on track. Sounds like you get used to a lot to give it oh, a run around as well. We were jumping. Would you be up for that? Absolutely. Yeah. We actually rode the RS and the RR and we swapped them around the Peak District. Really? Yeah, brilliant bikes. Good bikes yes, yeah. so I like the RR more than the RS. I like the, the RS. RS more, didn't you? Yeah, the RR breaks See, I haven't, me. I haven't ridden the RS yet. Um, I was given the RR two weeks ago. Yeah. I had to fold myself up to get on it for the first time. But yeah. I'm, my body is, you know, I don't have to do yoga every time I get on the thing now. Yeah. But um, I love it. The RR is an awesome bike. Yeah. Well, I uh, appreciate your time, Charlie. I know you're a busy man, so thank you so much. It's really nice to see all the different models, even though some manufacturers weren't here, like Honda. Yeah. I was excited to see the Hornet. I was excited Definitely. to see the Translap. Trans so what was your highlight of the day? What did you enjoy seeing the most? So what I really liked about this event in particular is it, it seems more intimate and um, cosy. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot less to see than, say, the big shows in November. Yeah. But... There's still a lot to see. We've got yeah. the drag strip, and having the racers, Peter Hickman, John McGuinness, Dom Hobson, everyone like that, you know, dragging it up and down the strip. That's cool. Just the vibes in here, more, you know, intimate and hmm. snug and yeah, but still plenty of bikes to sit on. So on that note, okay. we'll sign off. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Bye. shaved around 30 I forgot I think it's 40 oh. but yeah but I don't oh. want to say it because I couldn't find it online right. sorry <laughs> what numbers is on the bike what do you mean numbers, numbers in BHP <laughs> fully kitted out with a fully kitted out with in brakes now we are going where <laughs> I don't know where <laughs> going sorry. okay, okay. So. wait I'm looking at you, looking at wait, uh, okay. Just, yeah, and it also got cool things like you've got your traction control, you've got your ABS, it has... I can't wait to get out on it more this year. Yes. Well, 
I'm looking forward to